Hello everyone. Today on What Mountain Day, we do have with us an Indian prodigy kid who achieved to be on world's fourth highest mountain and Africa's highest mountain, Kilimanjaro, despite being a diabetic patient. Pride of India, pride of Godha family, Mr. Harsh Godha. So, what is Harsh all about? I'm quite self-critical at at point. I'm reflective and I do want to learn new things. I'm very ambitious. I I only give up on an ambition if I don't see any results coming out even if I have improved. So yeah, I mean I don't like quitting. But that's also a flaw because sometimes that 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 in the end just makes me become unproductive. Life is and, productive, yeah. Yeah. I value like loyalty when when I look for friends, I guess, yeah. So my my closest friends, I I don't have a lot of close friends. I have like one person who I care dearly about as a friend and yeah, that's that's it otherwise. It's- well, we see an achiever, a kid teenage who has achieved such a big thing in just growing up years. We always think about the family, like how amazing the family must be, who has generated mm-hmm. such good kid. So tell us something about your family. I guess the closest person I am to is my mother. Generally speaking, my, my mother is the one who keeps like sort of driving me, but at the same time, I know like my father kind of cares. He's just bad at expressing himself. I think you understand that in a later on years, I think so. Younger brother is, he's, he's a technician. I would say he knows a lot about computers and I guess that's sort of his thing. He swims a lot though. So also some light over your academics. I guess uh, as a kid in India, when I was just living there, generally speaking, since I wasn't really motivated towards sports by anyone, I, I just focused on like, oh, hey, maybe I can just survive on living through just kind of being the better scholar than a better physically fit person. And that's why I ended up being like better at academics throughout my life. But then when I got here in Tanzania, uh, it being a very open international school sort of allowed me to explore new things like hiking, for example. When I, when I first went on my hiking trip, actually, I still remember I came back and I was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> Who inspired you for hiking? Who, how did all it started? I was just about to come over. It. Uh, well, it wasn't just one person, like specifically speaking. Because I, I started Any off... Any specific moment, the, that moment you realized that this is me, this I need to do. I mean, there wasn't a this is me moment. It was more of a sort of me realizing how unfit I am at some point moment. It was like, because I had my secondary school graduation, which was in grade 10, which is M5 in this school. And I bought the suit a year ago for that graduation in advance. And when I put that suit on, I could I could barely fit into it. But like like that was that was sort of like my motivation. Just kind of I mean it was personal, but then it was it wasn't like only driven by me, I guess, because like there were people around me technically who were like, "What? Harsh, you have, you have so much potential. Why are you just wasting? You know, if you if you actually tried, you can improve in certain aspects of yourself." And I, I took that to heart and then I was like, okay, I can, because then that, that's when, because this happened when I was in like grade nine, I sort of started slowly, gradually improving because like I, I, I wasn't a sporty person, but then I was like, hey, maybe I can try exploring sports. So I began exploring sports like basketball and football and, and ultimate frisbee and touch rugby. And I, I started trying everything and, until I found something I really enjoyed. Okay. So like, so for that, fitness, sort of... for fitness, you converted yourself into a sports person, and uh, I think this climbing you enjoy. I I found a person I really liked, and I kind of 
wanted to look better. Uh, I mean, it, it was a positive change, but yeah. still. Yeah. And then, like, I, I ended up doing multiple hikes in, in the span of, like, 10 days. When you start climbing, you were a sugar patient. How did you face challenges, and what were those challenges? I think uh, diabetes itself wasn't a challenge because... I just sort of learned to live with the disease itself because I had it for the last seven years or so. But the, the biggest challenge was my physical fitness itself. And I decided maybe it would be a good idea to go try hiking up a mountain. And it, it, the, the, the surprising thing is it wasn't that hard because uh, like if, if I look back now, it, w- it wasn't that hard of a mountain because the max altitude we went to was about 1,200 meters mm. but really not that high and and like six kilometers in total of hiking but for me back then it was really tough it was yeah because I, I wasn't super fit and i remember i had to get pushed up the last leg of the hike literally just to, to reach the summit otherwise i wouldn't have made it <laughs> The fitness was the biggest challenge. The main difficulty was the being fit. Yeah. What keeps encouraging you in between when you start climbing? We all have our thoughts. What were your thoughts? What were going on in your mind? Especially you have uh, top the Africa's most highest uh, mountain, the world's fourth highest mountain. What were you thinking in that particular journey? I was just telling myself I'm unprepared. Okay. But but the resolve really started. The, the resolve really started sort of shaking once I got to the mountain itself because I was like, "Am I really prepared?" So inner battle was totally on. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, during that time, I guess what kept me motivated constantly, as especially on the summit day, was sort of because because the summit day was the worst. That was about like we started off at eleven p.m. at night. And yeah. we ended the hike at about 3.30 the next day. Yeah. So just constant hiking through that time period. That, that was hard. And, and what kept me going the most was every time I sat down and, and felt like giving up, I was sort of thinking about how I can't because there's, there's so many people that, that supported me in getting there. So I, I have to keep going because other, otherwise... The, the 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 people's faith in me would would be misplaced and and i can't let that happen because like yeah. if if they believe i can do it then i can do it you value them yes we're very much so yeah okay and after all this when did you stop that mountain how did you feel it we all know how well, it feels after overcoming so many difficulties and being on top. But what did you feel in your words? Well, at the summit itself, the, the Uhuru Peak bit, I couldn't... Because it, it was like the six kilometers and well, technically 5.8. But yeah, yeah up, up there, you can't really think a lot just simply because you're so exhausted and there's not enough oxygen up there. You're you're more focused on breathing than really thinking about it. Okay. Uh, but but right before that bit is this place called the Stella Point. That's the last checkpoint before the summit. Is is when I really felt like I I was so happy because I I never thought I could make it. Like I was like I I actually did it. I did it! <laughs> Yay! And who were there oh, on the mind? Like we get some in some bad or good moments. We always remember a few close ones. Who were there? There was definitely my mother. And then I, I pulled out snacks that I got from home, which she made. And I ate that. And I was like, oh, wow. I miss oh, home. <laughs> I miss home. <laughs> and the second person in my mind was uh, this girl from Romania called Raluca. Hmm. And she, she's been like, my support system for the last year and a half always been there for me if i'm in trouble she helps me out 
yeah, and just a great friend. Always supportive, always motivating. So we can say a math genius too. A math genius too. Seriously. Great. So we can say two women are there in your life to make keep you motivated. Yep. We want to know that is there any role model whom Harsh following or idolize or want to be like him or her? I guess the person I idealized the most. I mean, he's not around anymore. He went to teach in Thailand. Okay, Thailand. Uh, was this 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 man called Mr. Olivier? Okay. He's from Quebec in Canada, and he used to be my French teacher and my basketball coach. Any special method from your side for newbies who want to start climbing or a teenager? Well, I guess for 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 newbies who would like to, or or if teenagers would like to start hiking themselves, the the most important thing is to is to keep going. Don't don't worry about the end. Worry about, or don't worry in general. Like like keep going and and enjoy enjoy the journey. Don't don't wait for the end because if you wait for the end, you you will miss the small things, the small beautiful things around you for sure. And and these things matter okay. because through throughout these trips, you see a lot of different things happening. You see you see others trying people around you trying to help others become better themselves or or helping them stay motivated or encouraged to finish the trip. You you learn a lot about yourself if you're focused on the smaller things. Is you see yourself behaving a certain way through the trip, and maybe that that certain way is a good thing or a bad thing. And if it's a bad thing, you can try improving it. For my personal self, I I learned that I wasn't exactly the most tolerant person, so I worked on that. I I learned how to be more mindful of others because there, there are some patient. people. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because there, there were definitely more people on trips who were who were complaining, mm. and initially, when when I saw myself, I knew like I I was being mad at those people. I was being angry with them. But now I'm like I I, I try to understand why they are complaining and and try to help them. So you you learn to improve and you learn smaller things about that yourself about yourself through hiking that you maybe necessarily didn't know before. I think being yeah. mountaineer of is a process, whole soul process of of your being fit or being a more strong human being, and lots of improvement from inner side to be more calm, more patient, uh, full, more uh, you know focused. I think so. It's a whole Absolutely. journey. It's whole transformation. So thank you so much, Harsh. We enjoyed a lot. Hearing you, it's a really nice experience, and thank you so much for being with us on Amazing 